Well, as I was praying about what to say today, I also spent time kind of reflecting on like what things were like when I was graduating high school. How many people here can remember their high school graduation? Yeah. Um, here's a big question. So when you were thinking about your high school graduation, back, back when you think about that time, and you were thinking about what your life was going to be like, how many of you can honestly say that, you, that your life turned out just like you thought it would? Yeah, you don't see any hands. <laughs> um, you know, I, over the years I've, I've learned that you know, God's always working on our lives, and His plan is better than our plan. So it's important for us to walk in that. Um, I want to start off by looking at 1 Peter 3.15. We talked about hope uh, during worship time this morning. Uh, this mentions it also. Uh, but in your heart set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. We do this with gentleness and respect. You know, earlier this year, when we were setting the spiritual gifts in youth group, uh, we agreed that not everybody has the gift of evangelism. Mm -hmm. However, we talked about that all of us are called to evangelize in our own special way, using the gifts that we were given. Um, when we went to Urban Hope in Philadelphia this past year, uh, we talked about how to do that in practical ways. And one way to do that is just to simply, simply share your story with others. Meaning, give your testimony. Tell people what Christ has been doing in your life and, and is still doing in your life. Um, so, while this morning is not about me at all, it's about our graduates, there is part of my testimony <coughs> that I want to give because I think it's applicable to, uh, to our graduates today. Um, but before I do that with you, I want to remind you of two other verses. First of all, Jeremiah 29, 11. This is a popular one. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. So he knows the plans that he has for us. And then Ephesians 2, 11. Therefore, remember that formerly you who are Gentile, oh, that's not what I wanted. I've got the wrong verse up there, I'm sorry. What I meant to put is, for we are God's handiwork, created in Jesus Christ to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Um, so, those two verses tell us he knows what plans he had for us before we were even born, and he prepared those, yeah, before we were born, uh, for us to walk through. He, he designed each one of us for a purpose, and for a specific purpose. He knew exactly what he wanted us to do, and he also knew what we would end up doing. Um, and here's the thing, with God's plan, I firmly believe it's, it's supposed to be a full-time thing. It's not a part-time thing. It's not something you know, where we go to work during the day, doing whatever it is we want to do, and then live out that plan afterwards. They're supposed to coincide. Um, you know, at, at Momentum Youth Conference this last year, uh, one of the main speakers, Pastor Clayton King, he used a phrase over and over and over in, in his speech, um, talk about being only one for the only one. Um, not being two-faced, not being a part-time Christian. Um, being out of faith all the time for God. Being only one for the only one. And, and I want to just encourage our graduates and everyone else to do the same. Um, so I do think God's plan includes our career choice. I think he very much so cares about what, what, what we do with our lives, um, including our career and not just our spare time. So the question that I want all of us to, to answer is this, and this is a tough one. Are we following God's plan or are we following our own plan for our lives? And that can be pretty convicting. Uh, because we all have a tendency, I think, or at least I know I do, to uh, set my own plans and, and go after it. But God has a plan for everything. Um, and that's where my testimony comes into play. Um, and I'll be short about this, but from the very beginning, as, as far back as I can remember, the only thing I ever thought about doing was being an architect. And so all through school, 
middle school, high school, I took all the math courses and drafting courses and, and everything that I thought I needed to get into architecture. And then when I did graduate, the first thing you know, I, I set out to do was to apply to Ball State because that was a natural fit because of their architecture program. And everything was going fantastic. I got uh, enrolled at Ball State, applied separately to the architecture program. Uh, it was the number one program in the, in the country at the time. And they only accepted like six or seven freshmen a year in the program. Um, so things continued to go just as I had planned. Uh, I got accepted into the architecture program, started classes, <coughs> and then uh, classes went great for the first week, and I was all excited. And then the second week hit, and then all of a sudden, I just got this gut feeling that something wasn't right. And <coughs> that scared me to death, and I still get emotional about it. Um, and so I prayed about it, and I asked God, hey, why am I feeling this way? What is wrong? And he hit me like a ton of bricks because he just told me, this is not what I wanted you to do. You never asked me. And he was right. I was living my plan, not his. Um, so, yeah, I was scared to death to call my parents to let them know. <laughs> but I did. And that very day, immediately, my dad drove over to Ball State. Uh, took me out to lunch at, in the village at uh, the subway there, and we talked about it. And um, I just remember you know, him asking, "Well, what what do you want to do? What what is it you're supposed to do?" And I said, "I don't know. <laughs> I had never thought about anything except for architecture." So I just happened to have the Ball State course catalog with me, a big thick book, and I opened it up, and the very first thing I saw was physical education teaching, and it just made all the sense in the world to me at that point, and that was an answer to prayer right there. Um, it just it made sense. You know, I, I could see then at that point how God had prepared me for that, even though I wasn't walking yet. God had prepared me all along for that. Um, my dad, who I just noticed was here, um, had always coached me. Hmm. In everything that I've done, um, basketball, baseball, football, everything. Um, and through all those years and all those teams, even as a young kid, I could see that other kids looked up to him and, and appreciated him. Not every kid had a dad like I did. Um, and you got to put him in my life as, as, a, as an example on how to, you know, how to coach and, and how to be a PE teacher. Um, so, you know, I, I thank God for that. Um, so he was working in my life the whole time, and I just didn't realize it. Um, um, yeah, as, I, as I look back at it now, I kind of see it as a Jonah-like experience. You know, if you're familiar with Jonah and the whale, God told Jonah that his plans for him at that time was to go to Nineveh. And Jonah obviously didn't go to Nineveh. He turned around and went the opposite direction. And God brought him back <laughs> through the whale, the big fish. And where did he bring him back to? Nineveh, <laughs> right where he wanted him to go in the first place. Well, likewise, I feel like God wanted me to work with youth. And I went off and did my own thing at first with the architecture and God brought me back to my Nineveh, which was middle school. <laughs> if you're laughing when they have middle school kids, you know that that's not much of a stretch. <laughs> yeah. um, but the cool thing is, looking back, you know, that was just a stepping stone that God had put in place for me. Because middle school, teaching middle school and high school eventually gave me opportunities where God opened the door for me to, to talk to kids about God. Even in public school, I've always been amazed at the opportunities I've been given. Um, and then that allowed me to work with Youth for Christ for several years. And then that experience led me here um, to be a youth pastor. And I, th I think that was God's plan 
all along, but um, it, was, it was cool to look at. And last week, Rustin mentioned the Israelites and how it took them 40 years wandering in the wilderness. Um, and the entire time, even though the trip shouldn't have taken that long, the entire time God was watching over them, building their faith, preparing them for what was to come next. Um, and I think about 40 years, I, I just turned 40 a couple weeks ago. Um, my wife turned 40 five months before that. that it's not relevant. I just, uh, I mentioned that every time I came in. Um, but I can see how God took 40 years of preparing me for this. And when I say this, I mean being a youth pastor, not being up here in front of the side of um, But I do believe that being a youth pastor was God's plan for me all along. And it's neat to see how we got here to this point. Um, there's a quote that I want to share with you. And this came from uh, Gladys Gilbert, I think I'm saying her name right. She was a missionary to China. And, and I uh, got this quote. The first trip uh, we had to Nicaragua, um, get that quote up here. Uh, Gladys Allward says, if God has called you to China or to any other place, and you're sure in your own heart, let nothing deter you. Remember, it is God who called you, and it is the same as when he called Moses or Samuel. So I just think that's really cool to think about. The, it's the exact same God who called Moses to lead his people out of Egypt, who called David to slay Goliath. It's the same God that's calling each of you graduates and all of us to do what we are supposed to do. It's no different. Um, it's really cool to think about that the same God cares just as much about you and I as he does, as he did all the ones that we read about in the Bible. Um, but I want to encourage you and say that you know, if you're willing to step out and follow God's path, He'll take care of all the details. It doesn't mean everything's going to be easy, though. Uh, sometimes he takes us out of our comfort zone to challenge us, like he's doing me right now. <laughs> um, and Moses was a perfect example of this. Moses wasn't comfortable with his role, with what God asked him to do. Uh, and he and the Israelites had plenty of troubles along the way. It wasn't easy for him, but God helped him out every step of the way. The other thing I want to encourage the graduates with and, and all the other uh, youth in, in here, don't think for a second that God won't use you just because you're young. Okay? Age, doesn't, age doesn't matter. If God calls you to do something, He's going to see it through, and He's going to give you everything you need. Two verses that I want to bring up. 1 Timothy 4.12 Don't let anyone look down on you because you're young. But set an example for the believers in speech, in life, in love, and in faith, and in purity. And then the second one, Jeremiah 1, <coughs> verses 4 through 8. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were, set, before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I'm too young. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and I will rescue you, declares the Lord. It makes me think of my favorite Bible story, David and Goliath. And the neat thing about David to me is that when he slayed Goliath, he wasn't even supposed to be there, he was young. And the only reason he was there is because his dad sent him to go check on his older brothers and to take him some food and supplies. That was the only reason he was there. And everybody thought he was too young, but he got there and he saw what was going on. And I fully believe God put it in his heart to just go do what everybody else was not willing to do. And age was not the difference between, between David and everyone else there. The real difference was that David was willing and he trusted God for the results. He knew right from the beginning that he had one. And so I encourage you to keep thinking about that. Um, you know, God's already done some really cool things that I've seen in this past year with our youth. You know, it's, 
I love seeing our youth up here on the stage on Sunday mornings and on Wednesdays, what they do. Um, Christian, where's Christian? I was extremely encouraged by him in his special last week. Uh, you know, a few weeks ago, we got to go see uh, a couple of our girls in a, uh, in a play, Mary Poppins, it was fantastic. You know, it's really encouraging me to me to see how God is already using our youth. And I'm extremely excited to see what he's going to do with the five of you graduates and, and all of the rest of our youth in the future. Um, I'll switch gears here a little bit. One other thing that I want to talk about really quick is a concern that I have, though. Um, our youth are under attack, especially when it comes to their faith. I've been reading a lot of studies lately throughout the last year that claim that out of all the youth in America that have attended a, a church like this, born and raised in the church, we're not talking about the, the unchurched kids, we're talking about kids who have been raised just like ours in a church like this, they claim that 70% of them, by the time they get in their early 20s, walk away from the faith. And that scares me to death. I don't want to see that happen. Um, put a little plug in, you saw it in the video announcements, but this Wednesday, at our house, we're doing the, the kickball tournament, parents versus kids. Um, those of you that are parents that have middle school age kids that are going to be in sixth grade and above, or, or grandparents, highly encourage you to come. And of course, we want you to have fun uh, playing the kickball and enjoying the, uh, the cookout that we're going to have. But the parent meeting that we're going to have afterwards, I'm going to show a little video, uh, just a snippet of a video um, called Already Gone by Ken Ham, that is the Creation Museum. Because um, he talks about the reasoning for that issue, like why he thinks so many kids are leaving the faith um, and not following God's plans for their lives. Um, so yeah, I want you to get encouraged with that. Come so that we can work together on this. Because um, it's got to be a joint effort. Parents and myself, grandparents, um, I think we can fight it, but it's gonna, you know, it takes all of us. Uh, for the graduates, I want to encourage you to do the following, four things. First, whether you're going off to college or, or whatever it is you're doing, be aware that the world, including college professors, are going to try to lead you astray by telling you things that go against Scripture. Um, I encourage you to really study your Scripture so that you can tell the difference between the truth and the lies. Um, You've got to be able to know how to defend your faith. And the best way to do that is to know your Scripture. Because um, if it goes against Scripture, it's not from the Lord, simply put. Um, and I, we've talked about this in youth group, but we're studying Genesis. We've been going through Genesis for the last year, and we're about halfway through. <laughs> um, we've been going really deep in it. But I strongly encourage you to take Genesis chapters 1 through 11, literally. Take it as it's written. Um, and use that as a foundation for your faith because to this point I haven't found a single thing that I couldn't find the answer to in Genesis 1 through 11. God set that foundation right there at the beginning of the Bible for a purpose. Um, the second thing I want you to do is to get involved with a good Bible teaching church. If, if you move away from, from this area, get involved with a church. Uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verses 25 tells us to not give up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. You know, there are people out there that think, well, I, I, I can be a Christian and not have to go to church. And that's true. Coming to church is not what saves you. It has nothing to do with it. But God put the church together for a purpose, and we all play a part. And, you know, part of that is, is to to encourage one another and, and to come alongside each other when we're, we're going through struggles, and we all do. Um, third thing I want to tell you is to hang out with other believers. The fellowship of the saints, it's extremely important. 
uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.11 tells us to encourage one another and build each other up. Okay, and then fourth and last, follow God's plan for your life. And if you don't know what that is, just ask Him. <laughs> He'll tell you. I promise. He'll tell you. Um, and call the graduates back up. Those that are still here, I know Connor had to leave. But those of you here, come on back up. The first thing I'd like for you to do, I'll hand you the microphone, put you on the spot. <laughs> I should tell everybody, introduce yourself, just in case somebody doesn't know you, and then let them know what your plans are for this next year, and maybe even what you see yourself doing five to ten years from now. All right, so my name is Lucas Briss. And this fall, I'm planning on attending IUPUI in Indianapolis to study biology on a Greek medicine track. Um, and in five to ten years, I am hoping to go to medical school after that and um, become an orthopedic surgeon. Um, I'm Lexi Duro. Um, what were the questions? <laughs> Okay, um, I'm going to be starting at Ivy Tech this fall for, uh, I'm going to start off with my general studies, but then hopefully I'm going to get into the nursing course, um, I'm going to get my LPN, then see what happens after that, I don't know, that's all I know. <laughs> okay, I'm Atticus Klaffenstein, and next year I'm going to Vincennes University to study conservation law, and then the next five, ten years of Hopefully, it'll be in law enforcement somewhere. Well, before we wrap things up, and while they're up here, what I'd like to do is, you know, it seems like every time we have a mission trip scheduled and we're sending people out, we pray over them. Well, like John said earlier, this stage in their life is, is closed, but another chapter is opening, and, and we're sending them out to follow God's plan. So what I'd really like is for our prayer team and our elders, parents, and anybody else who'd like to come up here, surround them, lay hands on them, and pray for them. We'd love to do that right now. Yeah, we can move down here. So we I think Doug's going to lead us in prayer. <laughs> Father, dear Lord, thank you so much for today. Thank you for the special day that we got set aside, Lord, to recognize our graduates. Lord, we, um, we can't help but think that they're standing on the edge of the ocean, and they have um, unlimited potential, unlimited possibilities in front of them. Um, Father, we just pray that uh, you would uh, guide them, lead them. Lord, help them to call on you. Um, because, Lord, there will be hard times. There will be trials. There will be struggles. Um, but, Father, we just lift them to you and, and uh, pray that uh, they would constantly seek you. That they would know that they've got a church family who loves them. Father, we think about, uh, Lord, we just think about the way that uh, um, they're, they're heading out. They're setting off on an adventure. And Lord, there are, <clears throat> help them to know, Lord, that they can always come home. Lord, we, can, we have always a home with you. And Lord, where two or more are gathered, there you are in the middle. And Father, we know that they're going to do great things. We're excited to see. And, and Lord, sometimes being in this position, you think, oh, well, you know, th there's so much pressure, like, oh, I've got to change the world. Well, that doesn't have to happen. You don't have to, they don't have to change the world. They don't have to feel, um, be under that sort of burden. But, but they can change the world for one person. And Lord, I pray that uh, uh, you would, um, as they set out their journey, that you would bring people into their paths that would encourage them, that would challenge them, and um, Lord, ultimately continue to point them to you. And help them to remember, Lord, that it doesn't matter how far they go, um, they'll always have a home here at Brighton Chapel. 
Lord, we, uh, we love you today, and we're so grateful that we have this opportunity um, to pray for one another. In Jesus' name, amen. Two weeks ago, when John Larmer was up here, he talked about the relationship between a farmer and his dog. And how, and I believe this story was handed down from Grandpa Gokunara, right? Um, and it really spoke to me because, you know, he talked about how a dog just wants to please his master, no matter what he does. He's just eager to go do what, he, what his master asks him to do. And the master is trained him to do that. And then he talked about foxes, you know, being around the hen house and, and getting ready to, to send the dog after him and you know, to protect him. And I bring it up because I want to encourage the graduates, hear the dogs. You know, and, and I want you to to be just eager to please your master, to do what he's asked you to do, and take comfort in knowing that he has trained you for the job. He's prepared it for you before you were born. And instead of foxes attacking the hen house, it's more like all the people out there who just need Jesus and they need somebody to point them to him. So, to the graduates and our other youth, I just want to end by saying this on behalf of all of us here at Brighton Chapel, Sickle. Thanks for joining us and watching this video of our sermon this past Sunday. We hope it's been an encouragement to you. Uh, we believe in the ministry of what, what's happening at Brighton Chapel, and we believe it's going to make a difference in your life. And so we hope that you'll come back and be a part of it. We hope you'll visit us in person, be a part of what's happening here at Brighton Chapel. We hope you have a great day.